Hello, it's Peter Wright and Kathleen Beauvais in Ontario, Canada, with episode number 110 of The Yacking Show. This is a show for awakening you to new perspectives for the changing world we're living in. A quick request, if you like our show, please subscribe to the channel that you're watching or listening to it on, because that helps our guests get more exposure, and exposure is good for everybody. We have another interesting guest for you today, as always, but it's not my job to introduce the guest. Kathleen does it so much better than I do. So let me welcome my co-host, Kathleen, down in Waterloo on a rainy day in Ontario. Hi, Kathleen. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Peter. Thank you for the intro. And thank you all so very much for tuning into our show. We so appreciate you and we love reading your comments. So do please keep those coming. And if anyone out there is interested in being a guest on our show, please don't hesitate to reach out to either Peter or myself. And as Peter mentioned, we do have an interesting guest with us today. And I think a very interesting topic and something that everyone should know about. Um, but please let's welcome Mary Kubiseski to the show. Hello, Mary. How are you? Hi, I'm fine. And I'm just honored to have been asked to do this. Oh, I'm very wonderful. excited. Well, we are excited to have you because this is, is um, it's an important topic, but not many people understand it. And that is thermography and Mary you own a you have a thermography clinic you're a specialist in in thermography so how about we start first tell our audience a little bit about your background your personal story and how you got involved in thermography and perhaps explain what thermography is yes um you know how you have your your careers all planned out and uh and you know what you're going to do well I did have that plan. Um, I was an educator for 15 years, teaching junior and senior kindergarten and loved it until I had a breast cancer diagnosis in 2004, 2004. Um, I'd been having mammograms uh, all along. They were always normal until I felt a lump in my breast. And um, from there, it led to you know a biopsy and surgery mastectomy, um, all the treatment that goes along with that. Um, and then when that was finished, I thought, okay, I've had breast cancer. I'm not the only one, uh, but there must be something I can do with this experience. Um, I wanted to look into prevention of breast cancer for other women and perhaps myself down the road in the other breast um, so because my tumor was estrogen positive, and that's quite common, it means there's too much estrogen in the breast, so it is uh, a hormonal issue. I found a doctor in Toronto who looks after women with hormone issues, and lo and behold, two doors from his office was Thermography Clinic Incorporated. Oh. So when my appointment was finished with that doctor, I popped into the other um, office and asked about thermography and uh, thought this sounds too good to be true but I made an appointment which was about three weeks later and after having the procedure done I was really really amazed with the information it gave me and um, for about I would say a year after I kept I took some girlfriends down there to thermography clinic incorporated they were imaged um, and I sent a lot of women there. And finally the doctor, Dr. Mostavoy, who is the head of our head office in Toronto, he called me one day and he said, Mary, what are you doing? And I thought, what do you mean? What am I doing? Mm -hmm. <laughs> he said, you're sending me all these women. Why don't you open a clinic in Kitchener? Now, one doesn't usually start a business in your mid fifties, right? But uh, I talked to my daughter, Amy Ball. Uh, she's a nurse. And um, the two of us are co-owners now of Thermography Clinic Incorporated mm. in Kitchener. Yeah. Excellent. So that's how it started. That's why it started. Um, and 13 years later, almost, uh, we're going stronger than ever. Very good. Excellent. So, so can you explain what thermography is exactly? Well, thermography 
is a radiation and compression free method of assessing a woman's risk of breast cancer. Uh, it uses in, an infrared camera, so there's no radiation and compression and or compression, um, along with some high-tech computer software. And we take images of the vascularity um, and the temperature in the breasts. Um, when there is a precancerous or malignant tumor, it requires an abundant supply of nutrients that can only come from an elevated blood flow. And that elevated blood flow creates heat in the breast. Normally, um, it's easier when a woman has two breasts uh, because one is compared to the other uh, for temperature and uh, vascularity um, in exactly the same spot. So we look at the breast like a clock so if we're comparing the temperature and blood vessels at 12 o'clock in the right breast, uh, not we, but the, the, um, uh, the doctors who interpret the images, um, then the other breast is also looked at in the same area. Um, and the temperature, there's a certain temperature difference that is allowed, but if that temperature difference uh, exceeds the allowable, then they get a score for that. And at the end of the whole interpretation, um, the images are rated from a low, medium, and high risk. Um, low, of course, is the best uh, risk to have. Medium means that we better investigate further. And high risk can also always, or can actually be breast cancer, but not always. Wow, interesting. Uh, so, is is it thermography a replacement for the conventional mammogram, or an additional diagnostic tool? Um, it's an additional diagnostic tool. Of course, uh, I feel that um, you should start uh, with thermography, and you can do that at age twenty-five. That's when a baseline should be done. Um, but safe structural test. Uh, that I recommend to go along with thermography is breast ultrasound. Mm -hmm. And that's my personal choice. Some women will do mammography as well, and it works well for them. But uh, for me, I've had breast cancer twice, and both times um, the mammogram did not show anything. Um, and if I can go into the last time I had breast cancer, it's a real good news story. Um, in 2011, in the breast that I had left, uh, there, there was a lot of tenderness. Um, there was a new vascular development there when I had thermography done, uh, which doesn't always mean that there's going to be a tumor, but it's a possibility. So uh, thermography along with um, the breast ultrasound, we monitored that for five years before the ultrasound showed a shadow in that spot. Wow. Because you, you can't take your thermography report, go to a doctor and say there's heat in my breast at 10 o'clock because uh, what will they do? So until there's a structural test that shows mm. something there, which in my case was just a shadow, um, and to my surprise, uh, after a biopsy, which I insisted on because I did have a mammogram in Toronto, um, and it came back normal. They wanted me to just leave it alone, come back in six months, and we'll look at it again. But with my history, I just had this feeling in my stomach that we better deal with it now. And it was four millimeters, keep that in mind, four millimeters mm -hmm. of breast cancer cells wow. only, not even a lump. And yeah. so mammography couldn't have picked that up because there wasn't a lump yet. But if you're going to have breast cancer, don't you want to know when there are only cells mm -hmm. and sure. not a lump? Um, so I had the uh, cells removed and I'm, I'm cancer free again. So that's, that was the tipping point for me. I knew thermography was really important, but when that, I didn't realize that I was doing thermography and it would end up benefiting me mm -hmm. that's <laughs> um, right. and avoiding, wow. you know, uh, another mastectomy. Um, so yeah, that is my um, exciting story. And I hate to make this all about me, but... Oh, this uh, is all about you today. <laughs> well, I guess so. 
but yes, that was, um, you know, I was still surprised I had breast cancer again, but after I realized it was only cancer cells and that they could be removed. Wow. That's, that was amazing. And you know, I think, I think this is something that most people don't realize is that by the time a diagnostic tool such as mammogram or you know any other ones that are used conventionally pick up on an actual cancer diagnosis. The cancer process has begun well before that time, well before it's actually been diagnosed. And it's Definitely. Yeah. with changing cells that haven't been detected by a diagnostic tool. Only when it gets sufficiently big enough is it picked up? And I think most people need, and that's where prevention comes into play, right? Is Absolutely. To yeah. Yeah. Uh, this from happening. And now, Mary, you mentioned something about, in your opinion, you would go with a breast ultrasound versus a, a mammogram. Is that because of the compression component of mammograms? Is, is that why? Well, um, there are a couple of reasons. Uh, the first being that the mammogram failed me. Um, the first time it shouldn't have, the lump was very large. Mm -hmm. uh, but from one year to the next year, at that time, they were doing mammography um, annually. Um, that lump had grown enough for me to feel it. Um, and the prior, the year prior, it, it had shown everything as being normal. Um, so that's the first reason that I lost uh, confidence in mammography. The other, I never had a lot of pain while having a mammogram, but um, it leads me to wonder what that is doing, not to mention the radiation, but the actual compression. What is that doing to the breast tissue, which is so delicate? Uh, that can't be good. I have no proof of that, but I just feel that that's not a good thing for the breasts. Right. And that's, and, and we'll, we'll make it known to our audience that this is your personal opinion, right? But um, yes, it's on your experience, yes. of course. Can you tell our audience what happens uh, when someone comes to the clinic for, to the clinic for a thermography exam? And I can attest because I had a test with Mary a few months back and it was an interesting experience. Um, but I'll let you, Mary, describe to our audience what they can expect. Sure. Well, first of all, they have to have an appointment because uh, we are a private clinic. Um, and so my room is kept at a temperature. I don't know if you remember. I do. <laughs> but it's uh, about 19 degrees, between 19 and 20. So when you're topless and you do come in and, and take everything off from the waist up, uh, you put your hair up so it's not on your neck, uh, warming that area. Um, and I have elastics and things like that for you to do that. And then you sit on a stool with your hands on your hips um, because you're cooling the underarms too, because when I image you, you're actually like this because we do want to image the underarm as mm -hmm. well as the breasts because of the lymphatic area being under there. Um, so you sit for 15 minutes while I enter all your information into the computer because you've previously filled out all the forms. Um, then I know you'll remember this, Kathleen, I leave the room and I go and get a bowl of 10 degree water, which uh, I had different comments about it. 10 degrees is not that cold, but I do get some complaints and some, oh, this is nothing. So I bring the water back. I have it sitting beside the client with a towel. And then we begin the first set of images. We take the anterior view. Then we take some oblique views, um, five in total. And then I set a timer and the client uh, stands up and puts both hands in the cold water plunge, we call it. For one minute, um, I say it's only one minute, but it's probably the longest minute of their lives. But <laughs> I have a way of asking them questions about their family, their kids, their grandkids, um, to get their mind off of the fact that their fingers are getting pretty cold. Um, and then they dry off, sit back down for a couple of minutes, and then I just repeat those images. And the reason we do that cold challenge is because we want to see the effect that cold water has on the blood vessels. Mm. Um, they'll either constrict um, or they'll remain dilated. 
And that gives the uh, interpreter lots of great information, which um, we'll uh, talk about more when we see the images. Um, and then um, after that, uh, they pay for the, um, the imaging, which is $265 plus tax. And that includes uh, the imaging. And then during COVID, we've been doing the consultation over the phone when uh, I get the report from Toronto and my client gets the report. We just discuss it over the phone so that um, she knows or he knows uh, what it means. Um, getting a report and not having it explained doesn't make sense. So we've always done that. I much enjoy it. Uh, I enjoy it better when we can do that in person, mm -hmm. but it seems to be working on the telephone uh, now. Sure. Very good. So you mentioned he or she, the client, he or she. I was going to ask you, can men also have this done? Because I believe some men do get breast cancer, correct? There isn't anyone who can't have it done. And although uh, there aren't as many men who have breast cancer, um, I had met two men. My husband and I did go to Florida every year for a little bit of a, a break. And at the gated community where we were renting, I met two men two different years that uh, somehow breast cancer came into the conversation and they had both had breast cancer. Mm -hmm. One was um, the fittest man that I have ever seen, slim, tall, jogged every day, watched 28. Um, the other one was the guard at the guardhouse and he sat all day and he was a little bit um, obese and I imagine didn't exercise and so on. So it didn't seem to make a difference. Uh, both of them did have breast cancer. And uh, in the last probably two years, um, I imaged my husband because he had a lump on his um, chest and uh, thank God it turned out to be um, a fatty lump. I don't know if you've heard that. Um, like and a light can bulb? have yeah, kind of. And you kind of have fatty lumps any place in the body. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to make sure that his wasn't cancer and it wasn't. So, um, and we can image anyone, uh, no matter what age. Um, there was a 12 year old girl who actually, I didn't image her, but um, one of the other, one of my other colleagues imaged her. And uh, she had breast cancer at age 12. So, um, there's no age where you can't have it. There's no age where you think I should probably stop doing this now. Uh, my girlfriend's mother was 86 when she had breast cancer. Wow. And she just died recently at the age of 103. Wow. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So there's no one who can't have thermography done with, on the breast anyway. And of course, there's full body and there's a lot more to talk about with that. Well, let's, um, let's talk about those images. So I have some images here that I can bring up on my screen, but let me share it. And perhaps Mary, you can walk us through what we're seeing. Sure. All right. So I take it you can see my screen. Yes. Okay. Um, these are two of the healthiest breasts that um, I probably have ever seen. Um, I, I wrote in at the top there, TH1. TH is an acron acronym for thermography. And one is the v absolute lowest risk that you can have. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know if I can point to anything, probably not. No. But there's a scale on the anterior view where you can see both breasts uh, on the left. Uh, uh, no, th those are the obliques right there. Um, there's a, a temperature and um, color scale to the right of those mm -hmm. images. And the lowest temperature of 25 would be seen in um, a deep purpley color. And as the temperature increases up the scale, you see blue and green, and those are nice cool colors. But then the yellow uh, starts to be a warmer color and the red and white are the warmest. Now, having said that, under the arms, uh, because we do perspire under the arms, um, that's always going to be uh, red or even red and white, depending on how, how um, maybe 
nervous the woman is. Um, she's just met me and she's sitting there without a top on. So that's enough to make anybody a little bit nervous, I think, uh, the first time. And under the breasts, there's always heat under the breasts. So you can see the red under there and that's mm -hmm. completely normal. Mary, um, would this yes. would this be an area because you said the yellow is starting to warm up? Would that be an area of concern at all? Um, it wasn't in the report. Um, the interpreter or the doctor was not concerned about that. Uh, that could have been a little bit of a oh, I don't know, uh, a pimple or something that she had scratched. I don't remember the case but uh, it wasn't uh, concerning at all. The neck area is red there, but two, um, unless I do a cranial dental, I really couldn't give any information about the warming there. And also sometimes when people are a little bit um, uh, nervous, um, they get a little flushed mm -hmm. in the neck area. So that could have possibly been that. And uh, you can see the other views, the obliques, we call them. We want to see um, the side view of the breast as well. Um, so that's what those other two images are. And then um, in between the images at the top in the primary colors and the ones lower, you'll notice a color change. If you, I don't know if you wanted to show those, but you can see the top part of those. Those are the images I took after the cold challenge. Mm -hmm. This one, and that's down. No, down below the whole set. Oh, this this image down here. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, the client up. did not change color. The doctor changed the color of those images so that he could uh, better see the um, reaction of the blood vessels to that cold challenge we spoke about. Um, and so that's why, and the little crosses all over mm -hmm. that confirms what I was saying. Um, the doctor is comparing the temperature from one nipple to the other, the periareolar, which is the circle around the brown part around the nipple. Uh, he's comparing those temperatures and in the upper chest too, one side to the other, just making sure they are within the allowable uh, difference. Um, and they were, that's why she's a TH1, a low risk um, client. All right. Shall we go? And then her, her follow-up would be suggested at 12 months. At 12 low. months. Okay. Mm -hmm. I forget what mine was. <laughs> Hold on. I'll get your file. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, now this one looks um, a little bit concerning, but uh, with her upper chest, you can see mainly and a little bit into the breasts, um, those areas of red and yellow, those are all dilated blood vessels. Mm -hmm. So when she did the cold challenge, um, the doctor did see after that, and, and uh, you can see that, those colors there, that most of her blood vessels, and it's very symmetrical, and symmetry is always better than asymmetry. So both mm -hmm. sides the same a lot of dilated blood vessels. And that is definitely pointing toward uh, a possible hormonal imbalance. Yeah. And um, when a person, when a lady has a, an imbalance in her hormones, it's usually too much estrogen in the breasts. And estrogen does feed tumors and that can happen down the road. So not to mention that she may be having a lot of symptoms of a hormonal imbalance as well. And so from me, she would then go to a naturopathic doctor who would be probably the only one who could help her um, to na naturally balance her hormones. Excellent. All right. That, that is quite amazing. It really is. So you, you mentioned um, cranial and or dental imaging. Tell us a little more about that, Mary. Um, I would like to do that, but Kathleen, I'm wondering if you had the image I do. where the person had uh, had breast cancer, because I find that it's mm. the, um, there. I sent you three, I'm pretty sure, and you can actually see in her breast the hot spot. Yes, I'm sorry. Oh, yes, uh, that would be interesting. Yeah, me, it is. Uh, sorry. Share my screen. Yes, there was one more image back here. 
Okay, so, yeah, the top one. See in the right breast, which looks to you like your la the left, but in the right breast, that area, there's a V and it goes right down and the tip of the V, um, that's a very um, red area, which it was yellow all the way down, but you can't see it because it's not close enough. Although maybe on the oblique you can. Yes, right there. Um, her left breast was a cool, um, I forget the, um, the number, but uh, she was probably a TH2 in the left breast, which also is um, still low risk. But in the right breast, uh, you can see at the top of those images to the right, it's a TH4, which is high risk. And there was already um, a little bit of puckering there, which can be a sign of a tumor under that pulling in. Um, not always, but uh, it was in her case. So from me, um, she was asked to have a breast ultrasound. Um, and from a breast ultrasound, uh, it went to a biopsy and um, it was diagnosed as uh, breast cancer. Uh, but she's alive and well. Um, she did move away from the area, so I've lost touch with her. But through a friend of hers, I've learned that she's doing very well. She had the tumor removed and uh, has done a lot of natural treatments, and she's doing well. Excellent. And uh, to Peter's question about cranial dental, here is the image ah. of what that would look like. Yes, I was hoping that I had sent you that, and I thought yeah. I did. Um, okay, so cranial dental, um, it's imaging from the top of the head or the hair. I try and uh, I give the client a headband, and we try and get the hair out of the way as much as possible. Um, and it's an image from the top of the hair to just below where the thyroid is. So we want to image the, uh, the forehead or the cranial and the sinus area and the mouth and the thyroid area. And so in this client, you can see on the right side of the mouth, uh, there's some red and mm -hmm. some white. So there's definitely inflammation there. Um, we can't tell them what's wrong, uh, but we do have a holistic dentist now in Kitchener-Waterloo for well over a year, Dr. Farahani. He um, moved from Stratford, bought a building and set up his practice just across from uh, Grand River Hospital. Um, and he does everything holistically. And um, uh, he has his own podcast. So if anybody's interested, they could, uh, they could investigate that. The next image down below is the anterior neck image. And you see that blue area mm -hmm. is here? Yes. And remember with the scale, I said the blue, um, the blues and greens are cool colors. Yep. And so it says there's cooling in the thyroid region. So um, that was something the client uh, didn't have any idea of. And maybe uh, we don't know if there's an issue with the thyroid, but then um, I would have suggested she see her medical doctor for some blood work um, to check her TSH, which is thyroid stimulating hormone and free T3 and free T4 and uh, thyroid antibodies just to see if there is something going on there, uh, whether she has hypothyroidism, which would be cooling. If there's warming there, it's hyper thyroidism usually or there could be some um, nodules in that area as well and uh, the blood work can show that but then she would move on to uh, an ultrasound to check that if the doctor was suspicious. Now Mary just going back to this image here for a moment where we see this white uh, part this is this imaging is actually going through the the tissue and is picking up something in the in the jaw right? Right. Okay. Yes. And I um, don't know if the, um, sometimes they do pill, uh, fill out paperwork. Uh, if they've had um, a root canal, if the, the client has had a root canal, um, I would say about 90% of root canals um, do have an infection in the gum a low grade infection sometimes, um, but there's no warning um, 
via pain because the nerve has been removed. And so um, the client wouldn't have a, a warning that something is going on there. There could also be um, gum recession. There could be mercury fillings. Um, it's hard to say. And so uh, from me, then that person goes to um, hopefully a holistic dentist because mercury needs to be removed in a very safe way. Um, otherwise, uh, a patient could be more sick after mercury removed in an incorrect way. Right. And we're moving on to our third image in here. Yes. And we see that a little more closely. It's the same thing I talked about already in okay. that, uh, in the right side there, um, that warming in that area. And a little bit even on the, um, on the left side as well. So, um, you know, he or she needs to go to um, the dentist and see what's happening there. Okay. Excellent. Did you know that uh, um, quite often um, oral issues, well, first of all, oral issues can dictate um, the health of the rest of the body. Mm -hmm. um, and in women, the breasts being uh, like you've got your, your oral, and then that goes down into here, and then the breasts are the next part of the body that can be affected as well as uh, uh, many other parts of the body. Like you could have arth arthritis symptoms, fibromyalgia. Um, and I'm not saying that they all mean there's something wrong in your mouth, but it is very possible. So perhaps you've already answered this. Is thermography mainly a way for people to see if there's maybe an indication of cancer, but could it also pick up other conditions such as cysts? or any, anything else. And I'm thinking of the breast thermography, but also the dental cranial one as well. Um, cysts normally don't, uh, are not fed by a blood supply. Mm, okay. And so um, I would say that probably not picking up um, a cyst for that reason. And, and that's a good thing that a cyst wouldn't be um, uh, nourished by a a right. blood supply. Mm -hmm. uh, but if the client chooses to have breast ultrasound along with thermography, then the ultrasound definitely identifies a cyst or a nodule. It tells where it is, what size it is. And then um, there is a breast oil that can be used. I could go on and on about things that you can do about cysts or nodules. And then the next time I see her, um, you know, uh, she'll have thermography done and, and hopefully have had um, the ultrasound done. And it's a way also of monitoring the size of the cysts and whether or not massaging her breasts with a, a breast oil and maybe some lymphatic, lymphatic drainage um, with, um, with a massage therapist who specializes also in breast massage and lymphatic drainage. Great. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's amazing the detail you can get from those images, isn't it? So it is. That, two quick, quick questions. Um, can the cranial one pick up other, other problems with the brain? For instance, um, if there was a tumor growing in the brain, would that pick that up or not necessarily? Unfortunately not. Uh, it could pick up inflammation mm -hmm. in uh, the cranial area and in the brain, but... Um, it doesn't image deep enough right. to actually tell you if there's a tumor in the brain. Uh, sure. But if there's inflammation, that could be a good reason for um, taking that to your doctor and investigating further. Right. And, and I guess elsewhere in the body too, for skin cancers, would it pick up, which are surface, would it pick up skin cancers? It can, yes, because skin cancers are uh, on the surface of the skin. So yes, it is good for that as well. Um, there is one thing that I wanted to still talk about uh, with regard to the cranial dental. Um, we have on both sides of our neck um, something called a carotid artery. Mm -hmm. And there is carotid artery disease. And um, when I do the images, of course, um, and they're right down to, you know, below the thy thyroid, and there is a side, a completely lateral view of both sides of the neck, 
um, the carotid artery disease could lead to um, a stroke. Um, and I recently had the experience, and again, we're talking about me, but uh, right here where the, um, the clavicle is, I had a really sharp pain that was waking me up at night, just a zap, if you will. And um, I got a little worried after probably three or four nights of that. And I thought, okay, there's something wrong there. Um, so, you know, you can't see your doctor these days, but I did talk with him on the phone. And I said, I'm a little worried about this pain. Um, what about a blood clot? You know, I'm self-diagnosing, right? <laughs> because you go on Dr. Google and that's what you do. Mm -hmm. um, but he immediately set up um, an appointment for me with a vascular clinic in Kitchener, which again is across from Grand River Hospital. Mm -hmm. um, and they did an ultrasound in that area. Um, and she told me that there was no blood clots. So that was a, a huge relief. But um, I had been carrying around for uh, my husband says he's too old, but a two year old grandson. Um, I had had them for the day and I picked him up out of his crib and, and carried him here and there because he's so yummy. Um, and I must have pulled a muscle or something in that area. And that's what was causing the, the pain. So uh, a little bit of an anti-inflammatory cream on there. And within a few days it was gone. But you know, if there had been an artery that was um, uh, becoming blocked, as you, uh, you might say, and could lead to um, a stroke, then that would have been uh, something that would have been so helpful for someone. Sure. Well, Very good. we are out of time, Mary. We are. Um, so can you tell our audience how they can contact you? Yes, uh, they can go to thermographyclinic-kw.com. That's the website. And okay. by dash, I mean hyphen. I don't know if we still call it yep. a hyphen these days. Um, and they will find out uh, the email address. Um, and the phone number, though, is 519 575 6801. Excellent. Great, great. Also, on the website, there's so much information about everything we've been talking about and more. Um, so, yeah. And if they want, if they don't live in the Kitchener Waterloo area, uh, this is another website that would be helpful. It's the Toronto one, and it's thermographyclinic.com. Um, and okay. if they click on locations, they can find a thermography clinic um, in their area. I do a lot of mobiles as well. I go to Listowel three times a year. Mm -hmm. I go to Goderich, Leamington for some unknown reason. <laughs> it started out as a client uh, asking me to come if she um, collected enough women for me to image. And now it's four years and I'm still going up there. So um, ah, very good. Yes. Yeah, there, there isn't any place I can't image because the equipment is very portable. Okay. Excellent. Well, that is absolutely fascinating. Thank you very much, Mary. You're very welcome. Yes. Thank you, Mary. And thank you all so very much for tuning in. Again, we love reading your comments. So please keep them coming. And if anyone out there is interested in being a guest on the show, please don't hesitate to reach out to either Peter or myself. Until next time, take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.